And how about... Ah, ah there, that wasn't too hard, was it? Thank you. Okay. Okay, so then we're going to go back up this way. Good, good arm. Okay. Got your hand? Yes. Right. Let's see what we get. Again. Off we go. We're going to get out of this. We're going to get out of this, are we? We met at a high school dance. I think I was the last girl sitting on the seat <laughs> waiting for someone to ask me for the dance and that's how we met. It'll be 60 years this December since we got married. There are actually two things that really have kept us together and one is music and the other is travel. There's a whole stack of memories. <laughs> I was never bored with Bert. His greatest passion was the university and physics the longest serving Dean of Science that Queensland University had ever had. And people are astounded. Why should such a man with, with a brain like that get Alzheimer's? I think we're at the stage where he recognises my face, but I don't think he recognises Judy, my wife. It's slow to start with, I guess, but once we got here, the world had shrunk for both of us to this and eventually he got a little bit aggravated and that's when I had to think really hard about seeing if he could go into a Regis next door. It's like telling somebody, you know, leave my house, I don't want you here anymore. Hardest thing I've ever done in my life. We manage, but it's hard but it happens to a lot of people. The man that I visited this morning only has the name Bert Frost, but he's not Bert Frost anymore and has no hope of being Bert Frost anymore. What we do is meaningful for mankind. Alzheimer's disease or dementia more generally, to be precise, is the leading cause of death for women and it's the third leading cause of death for men. These figures illustrate that there's a real unmet clinical need, there's no cure for Alzheimer's disease, and so it's important to find a solution. We often only talk about the numbers of people having dementia, but when you think of those caring for someone with dementia, well, the figure is much higher. I mean, 1.6 million Australians involved in care uh, with a population of 22, 23 million, it's a huge number. And we know that the population is aging, and so the numbers will only go up. So that's a real concern. QBI is the institute within which Stitcher Catra operates. QBI as a whole had historically an interest in normal brain function, and CJ Catra was set up to understand how the brain functions when things go wrong. So basically, by learning something in the disease space, one is informed of how things are happening under healthy conditions and vice versa. At CJ Kedra, we do have people working with different animal species, with worms, with mice, with sheep, humans. I think it's great. We need to come from different sides and angles. And a lot of these covers are serendipitous. So I think on the one hand, one needs to be hypothesis driven. On the other hand, research also needs to be exploratory. We have several projects which have led to fascinating data at the center, and we hope that we can expand these areas. The purpose of my dementia research is really looking at how can we detect changes early. One of the things that we do is look at how can we assess people in a more sensitive way? So what tools are we actually using to measure change? So we develop different tools. At the top, there's a square with a set of symbols and it sort of forms a pattern. Dementia has many faces. It's not just about memory. So some people get changes in language first or changes in attention or sometimes behavior. So they might become more apathetic or more impulsive. So if we can identify these changes very early and they get the drugs to match the phenotype, then you've got a chance to hold people before any change becomes irreversible or too far down the track. That's the holy grail. 
with what we know from the neuropsychology end and what's happening in the lab, I think that we're at a threshold for where things really are coming together. And I can feel that at Cadra, the knowledge coming from the clinical end, my end, the neuropsychology, together with those genetics, together with the molecular, because each of those areas on their own are at such a tipping point, it's when you bring them together that it will have that breakthrough. We need to have knowledge that can lead us to new therapies. And the university system is really important for generating that knowledge. And traditionally, the drugs and the um, therapies that are developed come from fundamental discoveries that happened decades earlier that are brought about by research at universities like this. It's really important for setting up the future. Well, I'm absolutely sure that the people who are researching Alzheimer's at QBI would be absolutely dedicated, absolutely dedicated to finding the answer to Alzheimer's. Well, if these wonderful scientists found some way of either curing it or preventing it, or even maybe extending the mental life of the person who's got it, because you can extend the life of Bert for almost any other disease at the moment that he might get, but you can't at this stage fix the problem with his head, with his brain. And it's the brain that makes us human.